Although the 2011 anime presented the Greed Island arc in a way that made it seem jolly and tame, the original story showed a lot of graphic violence that made me question if Hunter x Hunter should be categorized as a shonen series. And so today, I want to pull back the curtain and show you guys how the story was actually presented in the manga. How's it going everyone? My name is David and welcome back to another anime vs manga for Hunter x Hunter, which is a series in which I decide whether the 2011 anime or the manga was a better experience by discussing the most interesting changes that I found in both versions of the story. Today I will be going over 5 episodes from the Greed Island arc and I have to say that reading through this part in the manga was quite interesting because it felt like I was experiencing the uncensored and extended version of the Greed Island arc with how much extra stuff was left out of the 2011 anime. Now that is not to say that the anime was bad for doing that since I thought that it actually did a pretty good job of simplifying the original story. But if you're somebody who really liked the Great Island arc and you haven't read the manga yet, then I highly recommend that you do because I can tell that Togashi was having a lot of fun with the world building during this arc. So if you guys have been following this anime vs manga series up until now, you would know that the 2011 anime was so much more tame compared to the manga since there were countless examples of intense graphic violence throughout the original story and the manga's version of the Green Island arc was no different. For example, during episode 61 when a character named Jeet was suddenly killed off by another character called the Bomber, Togashi was not shy about showing how brutally he died compared to the anime where it showed a lot more restraint. In episode 64, when a character named Genthru revealed that he was actually one of the bombers and he blew off the face of another character named Jispa, the manga also showed Jispa's blown off face unlike the anime where Jispa was covering it. During the same episode, when a character named Puhat was trying to negotiate a deal with the bombers and he ended up with a decapitated head, the manga actually showed it unlike the anime. Finally, during episode 65, when the bombers tried to blow up every single member of the group that was trying to beat the game through hoarding spell cards, the manga presented one of the most brutally graphic and violent illustrations I've seen so far in the story. And I remember when I came across this scene for the first time as I was reading the manga that it literally left me speechless with the insane amount of detail that went into this horrifying moment. As you guys can see, the manga was not holding back at all when it came to showing all the gore and violence that went down during the Greed Island arc. But that wasn't the only thing that was let loose as Togashi seemed to be having way too much fun dumping so much more information about how the Greed Island game worked than was shown in the anime. So take for instance back in episode 61 when Gon and Killua were in Antokiba where they won a card after accepting a challenge at a restaurant where they had to eat their meal in a limited amount of time. The manga actually showed that Greed Island also had its own currency system that involved having money in the form of cards which wasn't shown in the anime. Now since Gon and Killua only carried Jenny, which was money from the real world that couldn't be used in the game, the manga showed that they actually had to work off what they ordered at the restaurant, which was so hilarious and I also loved this scene because video games naturally have their own currency system and I was actually curious about how the economy worked in Greed Island. Another interesting change I found in the manga was seeing that Togashi also took the time to list all 40 spell cards that were obtainable in Greed Island, which wasn't shown when it was supposed to during episode 62 of the anime. And I've got to say that this was really cool information to come across even though it was honestly a lot to digest. Another change I noticed during episode 62 was that when Killua earned the Sword of Truth card after winning the Rock Paper Scissors tournament, 
The confrontation that ensued afterwards with people wanting to steal the card away from him was much more elaborate in the manga with its going into detail about the mental states of the first pursuer and what he was going through before confronting Killua. And there were also a couple more people shown trying to steal the card in the manga afterwards unlike the anime where it just showed the first guy who confronted Killua and then a group of guys trying to get the jump on Gon and Killua. Another interesting change I found was during episode 63 when a new character named Benalt was introduced and the manga made him so much more creepier by implying that he was a cannibal as your biscuit said that he specifically liked the taste of flesh from 22 year old girls which wasn't mentioned in the anime. All these changes I've discussed today certainly made reading the manga worth it and while I thought that the 2011 anime was very efficient with what it chose to cut out, all of this extra information that was left in the manga was still quite enjoyable to come across which is why I will be giving 5 points to the manga. There were so many changes that I didn't get to mention here so if you're a fan of the Great Island arc then it's imperative that you check out the manga since there's a lot of good stuff in there that's just waiting to be discovered. As for when the next video will be coming out, please stay tuned for an announcement since there will be changes coming to the schedule for anime vs manga videos very soon. But for now, if you haven't checked out the first video for this series yet, then please go watch that to see how this anime vs manga series started. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.